Hello everybody and yes here's another Friday functions video and today we're going to talk a little bit about the Microsoft translator connector and how you can use it to translate your applications that's right let your users pick the language they want to see it in and then translate it into that language doesn't that sound awesome I'll show you how it's working at the top of my screen first and then we'll get busy doing some real data so I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to pick English and notice how the title of this app becomes translate. However, if I pick, pick French, and I'm only picking French because I can pronounce that, it's traduire. Now, if I pick Spanish, those of you that speak Spanish, would you please read this out loud for me? Fortunately, unfortunately, nobody can hear you, but that's right. That is the word translate in Spanish. So I am letting my user pick the language that they want to read my app in. Is that not cool? And guess what? I'm using some functions, all right, related to the Microsoft Translator. I'm gonna use the if function as well as the Microsoft Translator functions for translate. Let's look at, let's look at what I did up close here and then we're gonna even add some data to the screen, all right? So I'm gonna first select the dropdown, which I named dropdown, which probably was the default name. Let's rename it dropdown. I do DD for dropdowns. DD language. So I've actually just um, chosen that drop down as to be the place where they'll pick the languages. It defaults to the first language in the list, but let's go look at the items property of this drop down to find out what I use there. All I did was choose Microsoft Translator, give me languages. Now, if I wanted to default this to a particular language, I could go in here to the default property and change this to English. And that way I would be defaulting my dropdown. That's all that was. Okay, super easy. Now, what about this word right here? What did I do with this? So actually this is the label that was given to me when I added a new screen, you know, the default layout screens. Let's rename this label header text, all right? So now let's look at the uh, text property of this. And I probably should zoom in for you guys. Let's see if I can zoom in nice and tight. All right. So if you look up here to what I've got here, I have if DD language selected code equals English. So I'm kind of starting it where I think it's going to start, you know. If, it, if it's going to be English, then I want it to say translate. However, if it's not English, anything else, I want it to translate the word translate, which is the English term. I want that translated into the code that's select. And that's all I did. That's it, guys. Super easy. Now watch. I'm going to add data to here, right? I'm going to make this data driven. So let's zoom out so we can see our whole screen. And I'll try to get that to a size that we both can handle. And now I'm going to insert a gallery. Now, unbeknownst to you, let me just uh, go show you this. In the data sources, I also added a SharePoint list. So I have added, of course, before I started, I added the Microsoft Translator connector. You already know how to add connections, so I didn't want to waste your time with that. And I added a SharePoint list that has a list of fruit in it because I figured, okay, fruits are fairly easy to translate. That'll be low hanging fruit for a short demo like this. So after I added the Microsoft Translator and the Fruits Connector, then I built my app. But let's put a gallery in this app that has the fruits. So I'm just gonna do in insert. I'm gonna zoom out a bit to, so that I can see my gallery. Cause sometimes, you know, when you zoom, you can collapse your ribbon. So things will disappear. Just zoom back out and you'll find them, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and choose a blank vertical gallery. By the way, um, this will pop out my data panel where I can choose fruits. Now, by the way, I have picked a theme for this, just so that you know, the theme that I picked so that you can have the same look and feel. Let's see if we can zoom out some more. Okay, the theme that I picked was this um, one aqua, okay? Um, and so just so that you know, so that if you pick that theme, things will look like my screen. All right. Now, with that said, let's finish uh, modifying our gallery. 
So I'm going to just bring the gallery down and just use the whole page for it. Now, remember, I chose a blank gallery. So because I chose a blank gallery, we don't see nothing, right? <laughs> it doesn't mean that nothing's there. Let's go ahead and do a couple things with this gallery. Let's hit the edit icon and let's insert a label. This is what's going to hold our fruit. So I might name this label fruits. I'll rename it LBL fruit. And then in the gallery, I'll also rename that gallery fruits. I'm trying to get in the habit of always renaming, even for these demos, so that you guys will get that habit too. All right, so now that we have the fruit label there, let's change that to being the title of the fruit. So this is the title column in the SharePoint list, of course, right? And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to align this left and I'm going to align it top. And then I'm also going to change the width to be the width of the template itself. So gallery fruits dot template width, not width, but template width. And the reason I chose template width for the width of this label is now if I go, if I'm choosing my gallery and I change the wrap count to let's say three, it automatically will adjust the width of those labels so that they work, right? If I change the wrap count to four, they're automatically going to change because the width of my template has changed, right? Isn't that cool? All right. And I can do as many as I want, or I can go into my fruits panel and add other items or, you know, basically I have a lot of choices as to how this looks. All right. The other thing I want to do is I want to change the height of my template. Um, and so my template height so, which is the template size, template size is the template height. And I think that I use a, a uh, I might have used a flexible height gallery, but I'm going to delete all of this and make this 60. And that's all I want for my template height. Now I might add some padding here. So um, I don't think I want to, but I could also set my template fill. Um, to like that green, you know, we had a green on here in the rectangle. So I could go in here and set this to rectangle uh, action bar. So that gives me the same fill as my header. Um, and then I might, because I wanna spread them out a little bit more, let's do some padding here, spread them out or space them out a little bit more to 25 to give us some space between them. And you can play around with this until you're so happy with the way it looks. I love how easy it is in Power Apps to make things look great, right? And you might not think this looks great, but I think it looks great. That's what matters right this minute, that I think it looks great. I'm going to make the, the words bigger. That's a little bit too big. Let's make them like 20. And let's, uh, I like to do the, I like to make the ones selected to be bold. Um, so let's go in here to font weight. And then I'm going to go back to my functions here, but I'm still doing functions, by the way. Um, I want to do if this item is selected, one of my favorite functions, if this item is selected. I love it. The reason I love it is because now I can make a distinction on the screen between what's selected and what isn't selected. So what's selected is going to be bold, but what's not going to be selected is going to be normal. And now it's really easy to tell what's selected. Love that function. Okay, you got that as a bonus for free. Now let's translate these words. Guess what, guys? We're going to select our label header text. We're going to copy this function, Control-C, just copy it. And now we're going to paste it in the same area where our, um, where our labels are. We're going to make sure that we're in a text property. Make sure in the text property, it should say this item title. We're going to replace this item title with what we had up in the header. And all we're going to do, instead of the word translate in both places, we're going to put this item title, right? Because we want it to change for each one, right? And I know my SharePoint list is English. Of course, if my SharePoint list was some other language by default, right, if it was, then I would change this code right here. 
right? So my my uh, my language on my SharePoint site is English, so it's I can leave that E in. Um, but uh, if yours is something else, you might want to change it to whatever it is, and then it translates into the language selected. Guys, this is it. This is the whole story. Let's watch it run. Translate. All our fruits are in English. Let's go to my favorite language, French. All our fruits are in French. Let's try Spanish. Happens to be a popular language here in my country. Everything's in Spanish, including the header. Guys, we just made our application translatable on the fly. Do you love it? I hope you didn't mind this Friday's function videos being a couple days late just because I was off on Friday, but I felt too guilty to leave you without something for the week. So I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to the next Friday functions video. Thank you.